Welcome to RealtyCast Global, where we bring insights and advice from top professionals in the global market. Join us for a journey of culture and real estate from countries across the globe. So we're back with Michael Cobb, who happens to be the CEO and founder of ECI Development Company. He's been in Belize and all the Central American countries for about 26 to 27 years. And we just finished up episode one. This is episode two, and we're going to be concentrating on Belize. And um, I appreciate your sincerity and what you do, the fact that you took a leap of faith into Central America and found that you needed to, to do a service there, but then that led you into another area, into development. And I think that you've made a great uh, statement here about what you can do when you decide to get up and go and make it happen. And uh, for those that didn't hear the first episode, please go back and hear the backstory on, on Mike Cobb. I think you'll enjoy that. Um, in, in, as we focus on Belize, now there's a handbook, and, and Michael is great about writing about what he's done, what he's accomplished in terms of findings um, when you move into a foreign country, things that need to be done. And what got your interest in Belize in the first place? Yeah, well, um, it, it, I referred to this in the first uh, podcast, but th- thanks again for, for having me on. I, 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 I enjoy uh, I enjoy talking about these kinds of things because so many people today are really looking at living overseas, right? Or, or at least mm-hmm. owning property overseas, maybe vacation, investment, whatever. Uh, and it's it's certainly uh, 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 an area that's growing. More and more people are looking at it, and the importance of of doing it right and getting it right the first time is so important. So thank you for uh, for, for the first. Uh, podcast where we talked about the consumer resource guide and and really a tool to help people get it right the first time. Um, you know, my 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 story and and again we let people go back and listen to the first podcast. Um, you know, I went to Belize for my very first trip sometime at the very end of ninety two or early ninety three with a buddy of mine. Uh, Joel Nagel is his name, and he's a international tax attorney, and he does uh, asset protection work for for mostly for physicians. That that's his his client. Uh, client base. And so he went to Belize. He called me up one day and said, you want to go to Belize? I had no clue where it was, but I said, yes. So we went. And and this was uh, 93. And uh, when I got there, I, I, Ambergus Key, because Belize is a country, and we, we can come back and talk about thin slicing in a minute. But, but Belize, you know, Ambergus Key, Belize in 1993, had only sand streets. It was an old fishing village. It was truly a little fishing village. Population of the island, maybe two, three thousand people. I mean, it was tiny, and uh, uh, and 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 no building over two stories. This place was quaint, like I mean, just a throwback to you know, like Gilligan's Island. I mean, really, like Gilligan's Island with a few more people, right? And so it was. It, so I just I loved it, and I said, wow, I can see how this really could become something a lot more than it is today from a tourist perspective. And that's why we bought it. And and there were condo buildings going up and we actually uh, bought a couple condos on our next trip, kind of whatever, maybe March, April of, of 93. And, uh, and I started going a lot, right? And as I started going a lot over the first, you know, three or four years, we started a little business, a mortgage company, but but even more so just to see 93, 94, 95, 96, just to see uh, different things happening, more businesses, more, more development, more condo projects, more homes going up, uh, more people coming to the island, right? More restaurants. And I could just see this, this path of progress, right, happening. And back in the early 90s, late late 80s, early 90s, it really was a super niche destination. You were either a serious diver or a serious fisherman, mostly fly fishing. And if you were a serious diver or a serious fly fishing, you knew exactly where Ambergris Key was. If you were like me in 1993, I had no clue where Belize was, let alone Ambergris Key. Well, it was British Honduras when I studied it in high school, right? And I'm not sure that would have done it either. But anyway, but it was British Honduras until 1981, That's right. right? Yeah, right. And then it became Belize, still part of the Commonwealth, right? And so, 
Uh, and English is the official language, which I think has been a big part of Belize's draw, right? That English is the official language. But but you know, it just it just spoke of opportunity. It just spoke of like so much there that could happen and was happening, right? And I just said, you know, and that's why I left the computer business in '98. I just said to myself, my goodness, like I want to get on this train because this train is rolling. And and so was the computer train, by the way. And that's a different story. But um, but gosh, yeah, I just saw the potential in Belize. And here we are, you know, now uh, 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 30 years later, right from 93 to you know 23. Right. I mean, 30 years later to have seen much of this uh, of this potential begin to be realized, yet just an incredible amount left to to happen. So, uh, you know, in fact, one of the things people ask and you didn't ask, but but a lot of people ask me why Belize and and my answer is it's in the sweet spot of the development curve right i mean back in the back in the old computer days you could be on the bleeding edge you never wanted to be on the bleeding edge cuz that was just you were ahead of the time and and it was horrible leading edge was a good place to be sweet spot is the best place to be and i would say that belize is truly in the in the sweetest of the sweet spots right now uh in the development curve and 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 so it it's it's uh it, it really is exciting to have watched this transition over 30 years to be a part of it to actually be a big part of it uh as well and uh you know in fact i, I I'm, I'm so i'm going long on the answer but but i just got to tell this this is crazy so i was sitting with some 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 vips i'm just going to leave it at that i was sitting with some vips a couple of weeks ago for, for breakfast and uh they were asking well you know how many people do you have you know with your with it's a bank now how many people you have in your bank how many people do you have working for you at this resort that resort in construction blah, 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 blah. and he goes do you realize that you all employ over one percent of the belize workforce and we're like, what? And like, yeah, you guys employ well over 1% of the Belize workforce. And I just thought, my goodness. So we've been a big part of this, you know, this, this potential actualization of the potential as well as watching it, but we've watched it. We've participated in it. We've contributed to it. Um, it's, it's, it's very exciting. You, yeah. You, you did live there for a while in Belize and, and I'm thinking yep. about your wife and children were there also. Well, this was 1998, and we were living on Ambergus Key. So pre pre kid, just married, pre kids, and okay. we lived there for six months. Uh, and 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 I say this, I say this very honestly, that we lived on Ambergus Key for six months, and it was five and a half months too long. Um, <laughs> so you know, people are like, "What are you saying?" It's like, yeah, it wasn't right for us. We were living on a tiny little Caribbean island with a population of maybe you know, three, 4,000 people at that point. I mean, it doubled in population, right? But still three, 4,000 people, little tiny island, still sand streets. Um, like it, it just, it's not me. It's not the life I want. Conversely, I know we're not talking about Nicaragua today. Conversely, my wife, Carol, and my two-year-old daughter, Amanda, moved to Nicaragua in 2002 for what we thought would be two or three years. And we ended up staying by choice for 14 years. So, so the expat lifestyle is right for us in the country that's a good fit. And I think that's a really important point to, to make is that you know different countries feel different. Different countries, like clothing, they wear differently. Ambergus Key Belize was not a good fit for my wife and I. We just did not enjoy that particular lifestyle. But that's not to say people don't. I mean, tons of expats, lots of vacationers, tons of no digital nomads, and people coming to Belize, Ambergus Key specific, and they love it. It's a good fit for them. And they might feel the same way about Nicaragua. They go for there for six months and it'd be five and a half months too long, right? So again, different strokes for different folks. But well, but yeah, but lived in well, Belize it, for, for six months, but have visited there literally more than once a month for 30 years. I've been in Belize, I don't know how many times that is. You know, 30 times 12, however many times that is, yeah. you know, yeah, a lot, a lot. But but I was going to say, yeah. also, it's changed a lot since the last 30 years. I mean, when you True. were living there, today's a different world in Belize. Population 20, 25,000 on the island now. So, yeah, it, 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 it would it would definitely be a different experience if Carol and I were to live there again. Um, and it might be one that we would like and enjoy. I don't know. Um, that's a very good point, Hugh. It's changed a lot in in those you know twenty five years. Yeah. Well, 
Speaking of changes and what's happened within the last 25 to 30 years, what do you think about the next five to 10 years as far as changes in Belize? What do you forecast? Yeah. Well, you know, what we're seeing and why why truly Belize is in the sweet spot of of the development curve. I actually I think the development curve is a little technical. I actually use something and it's the same curve, by the way. And I put the in fact here, I mean, I it's in our consumer resource guide. I'll send that to you so you can put it up in the show notes, this chart right here, right? Okay. Um this this it, it it's truly a development curve, path of progress curve, whatever you want to call it. I actually try to make it really simple. I call it the popularity curve. And, and how I put the countries or the places in a country on this curve was I just simply asked myself, if somebody got married in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania this week, this Saturday coming up, where are they going on their honeymoon Monday morning, right? You know what? Tons of them going to Cancun, tons of them going to the Bahamas, bunch of them going to Costa Rica, not very many, if any, going to Nicaragua or El Salvador. And Belize is kind of right in the middle. More and more people going to Belize, but it's not nearly as popular as Costa Rica or or Cancun or the Bahamas, but it's way more popular than, say, El Salvador, Honduras, and Nicaragua, which are at the bottom of the curve, right? And so popularity actually determines a lot in terms of pricing, right? How much you're going to pay for the real estate, the acquisition cost of a piece of real estate, not very popular, low demand, better pricing. Cancun, Bahamas, high demand, high popularity, high price. Countries in the middle, you know, in the middle, right? And Belize is in the middle of that of that popularity curve. The other thing is that when you have uh, any measure of popularity, popularity has a direct correlation to occupancy rates, right? Renters, right? So that honeymoon couple, like again, figure a vacationer slash honeymoon couple, they're going somewhere, they're going to spend a week or however many nights, right? So very popular places, high occupancy, not very popular places, lower occupancy. And then you have what's called ADR, average daily rate. And so you get this idea of, you know, what your rate, low rates, high rates, high occupancy, low. And so these things all kind of correlate, but they correlate around popularity. Belize has about, this might be 14 years ago now, 12, 13, maybe 14 years ago, the cruise ship started coming to Belize. And I remember I was part of the Belize. I was on the board of the Belize Hotel Association, BHA, and 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 a member of the Belize Tourism Industry Association. And I remember the outcry on the part of the hotel association. We don't want the cruise ships. They're just going to bring people for the day. They get off. They get back on. What's it good for us? And me and this woman, Julia, who is just an incredible property manager as well, she and I were like these two lone voices, about 30 people saying, time out, time out. This is awesome. We want the cruise ships because you know what? They drop three, four thousand people every cruise ship. And now we get like, I don't know, two, three cruise ships a day. Right. I I, like every one of those people getting off, you know, some percentage, one percent, half a percent, quarter percent, pick a percent. I don't care. One, one, one hundredth the one percent. Right. But some number of those people are going to go, wow, that was really cool. I want to go back there someday. And then they're going to come back and stay in a hotel. Well, what's happened over this last 12, 13, 14 years is the number of people coming to Belize has truly skyrocketed. I mean, COVID things fell off, right? But skyrocketed, right? And the amount of airlift, I mean, Southwest is now flying. WestJet out of Canada. You get discount carriers. You get flights coming in from U.S. and Canada all over, Central America. Uh, they're talking about bringing in a European flight now. So you got all this airlift to bring in lots of consumers, right? But what hasn't happened to you and this is truly uh, incredible, is the number of room, the room inventory has barely increased, barely increased. And and there's just this really weird anomaly that after COVID, the amount of short-term, short-term and long-term rental, right, or or owner-occupied, those are the three categories, right? The the amount, this is insane, the amount of short-term rentals decreased after COVID. And like a bunch of us kind of got our heads together and like, what in the heck is going on? Digital nomads. 
digital nomads. They're renting for three months or six months. So they're coming down and they're taking what was typically, you know, nightly short-term rental uh, 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 space, right? And they're taking it off the market because they're renting it for three or six months. And so we actually saw a decrease in the available product for short-term rentals after COVID. Uh, now it's flattened out and it's probably picking back up again. But but anyway, the, the, these two things, demand going up and room inventory going down. I mean, this kind of gap, I mean, this gap right here, that's money. That's money. And the fact that Belize is just in the sweet spot of the popularity curve means you're going to pay one quarter of what you'd pay for the same product in Cancun, but your but your occupancy in ADR might be only like, you know, 40% less, right? So again, you've got this incredible mismatch between your cost of acquisition, your occupancy rates, your ADRs, the amount of room availability, increasing airlift and visitors. I mean, it's just this incredible window of opportunity. And I I think it's not it's not this week, it's not the used car segment, buy this today. But it's, I mean, it's one to two years. The wind, the, the prime piece of this window of opportunity is one to two years. And you ask for five years. I think over five years, whatever anybody does, you know, this year, next year, they're going to be so happy five years from now because the popularity should continue to go. It's a future. Who the heck knows? Right. But popularity should continue to increase. Airlift is increasing. And and then room availability, room delivery, right, will actually go up. But your acquisition cost is here. New room acquisition cost will be here. So so right. So you know, all of a sudden, your 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 uh, your ROI is based on your acquisition cost and these other factors that'll be equal for everybody else. Anyway, incredible opportunity. We've been talking about Belize for about a year now, and and then I said the, the, you know it's a two to three year window, and we're a year into the window. So yeah. I think it's I think it's very interesting that the people that were with you talking about making decisions about the cruise ships coming in and stopping didn't see that you and the other late you the late you and the lady saw yep. the yep. opportunity as free advertisement. Yeah, exactly. For Belize, <laughs> which right. would uh, they they discovered a place to vacation. Yep, and exactly. and I can see I can see a one two or three percent return just on that stop, and you put no money out for that. C- correct. In fact, the country the country actually got landing fees or port fees. You know, they get off the boat. Granted, they're not spending a lot of money because most of that money goes back to the cruise ship. But there's employment. There's taxes. There's you know some people eating the local restaurants. Whatever it is, right? It's so so actually, Belize got paid for the advertising, right? And exactly. for us, who didn't get any, we didn't see it plus or minus, right? We we didn't get the business. We didn't pay anything, right? We just got all upside. Exactly, Hugh. Exactly, hundred percent upside. Yeah. The um, what about government and politics in Belize? Yeah, I'm not sure no, if that's uh, a touchy subject or not, but I just wonder how that no, how no, is no, it, government it, and politics? Yeah, it's really not. So up until 1981, it was a, a colony, a British colony. Then it became uh, Belize and became part of the Commonwealth. The Queen's on the money. Uh, so and they still have you know all the normal Commonwealth treaties with the country of you know of England. Um, the, uh, uh, the there are two parties, uh, UDP and PUP, uh, red and blue, and basically they're really sort of like uh, our Democrat and Republican in the United States, just you know center left, center right, uh, and and they do what politicians do. They you know they have some fun and they beat each other up and then they you know, go out and have <laughs> drinks and dinner at night together, right? I mean it's 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 but it's a very they've never had a war. Uh, the only the only war they ever had was in the 1600s uh, when they defeated the Spanish uh, at St. George's Key, the Battle of St. George's Key, and I can't remember the year, but late 1600s, that was the last war they had. Uh, and they've been a very peaceful, stable democracy uh, since then. So yeah, uh, very, very stable government. The other thing we mentioned English language, but the other thing that's actually really, really comforting for uh, uh, US and Canadian investors uh, is the fact that it's English common law, right? The rest of Central America, Mexico and Central and South America is all civil law. And that is a very foreign concept to many of us. It's a totally different legal structure. And it's, it is very different. Uh, whereas common law, which is what we have in the U.S. and most of Canada, Quebec is civil law. But anyway, but 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 common law is familiar. And then the fact that all the contracts are in English, 
the legal language of a contract is English, right? And you can read the contract and go, oh yeah, this makes sense. It's kind of what I had in the States. Uh, like, so you've got stable government, you've got stable currency, it's tied to the US dollar two to one. So there's no exchange rate issues. Um, stable government, stable currency, English language, English common law, and then uh, uh, title is what we also recognize as fee simple title for a piece of land or strata title for a condo product where you're you know, you're buying a air and then the undivided interest in the land below. So again, from a real estate perspective, uh, very 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 familiar. Low real estate taxes, very low real estate taxes, um, and and very easy to uh, to do business there. Actually, yeah, you know. Um... The, the baby boomers, you know, we have, I, I can't remember the exact number, but I think every single day there's maybe 10,000 people turning 65 years old. Yep. And yep. a lot are moving into the Caribbean, into Central America. Yes. And because it's, it's, I guess, more economical to retire there. Yes. And I just wonder, what about Belize? Do you see a, an influx of people retiring into Belize? We do. Uh, uh, that that has that has uh, really been one of the factors that's taken away some of this inventory. Whether it was digital nomads, and and by the way, when I think there's sort of this stereotypical image when we say digital nomad, we think of a 25 year old with a laptop, right? Mm -hmm. Actually, actually, a lot of the digital nomads are now people in their 50s and 60s pre-retirement, right? And look, a 25-year-old may or may not have the flexibility that that someone who's got a seasoned career, right, can literally just say, hey, you know what? I'm moving to Belize. I'm going to dive and I'm going to fish. I'm going to do all the stuff I like to do. But yes, I'm still going to be your project manager, your salesperson, your sales assistant, your, you know, whatever customer service. I mean, all the kinds of portable careers, it doesn't matter where you are to do, right? And so we're actually seeing a lot of people in their 50s and 60s who are the digital nomads. We're getting some of the 25-year-olds too, right? Um, but, but yes, people are what I would say pre-retiring. They're saying to themselves, you know what? I don't have to wait until I'm 65 to go enjoy the lifestyle I always, you know, dreamed I would have when I quit my job and and can go live it. No, no, no. I can move to Belize right now. I can enjoy diving on the weekends. I can go fishing in the morning or whatever it is, right? Whatever they like to do, right? Or just enjoy the nice weather. Frankly, it depends on what part of the U.S. or Canada you're from. And so, uh, and then do this all day or do this or whatever it is for their jobs, right? So we're seeing that. So yes, it's happening. And and let me just also say that while we work on Ambergus Key, which is where we, you know, that we developed those, that's where that's where we started, that's where we continue to work. Belize itself is actually a, a, a big country. It's got mountains, it's got jungle, it's got uh, uh, farmland, right? So it's got a lot of different geographies. And if somebody you know was looking for something different than just say like a you know a beach a beach town, right? And they wanted something maybe in the mountains. There's some beautiful places in the mountains. Again, jungle areas and farmland areas. So it's got a lot of diversity in a very small package. The country itself is only 180 miles north to south, about you know 75 miles east to west. So it's a pretty small package, but it's got a lot of diversity, you know, kind of all in one place. And you know, but 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 I would say this that if but this is a this is a pretty specific statement. Lifestyle is one decision. Where where do you want to be? I want to be in the mountains. I want to be in the jungle. I want to be in a beach all by myself. Great. If that's a lifestyle decision, that that's the clothes you want to put on for that lifestyle and you feel comfortable in them. A lot of people ask me this question, where should you invest? Where would I want to invest? And I would only give one answer. Ambergris Key, Belize, this little island off the coast of Belize, it's a couple miles wide, 26 miles long. This tiny little island off the coast of Belize generates over 70% of the tourism revenue for the country of Belize, right? And so if you're looking for a place as an investment, you want to be where the tourists go. Presumably, you're looking for an overnight investment. You're looking for you know, a rental property, right? If you're looking for sugarcane farming, well, that's a different part of the country, right? But if you're looking for a real estate investment that will cash flow, Ambergris Key Belize is, you know, unless you had some super specific reason, would be exactly the spot you'd want to be because 70% of all the tourism revenue comes from this tiny little island. And then to drill it down a little bit further and be very honest to you, this is a very self-serving statement 
but I wouldn't say it if I didn't absolutely believe it 100%. You know, branded product. You know, we have the Best Western franchise on the island. We have the Marriott franchise on the island. There's one other Marriott. It's an autograph. There's a Curio by Hilton. That's it on the whole island. And so as Belize transitions into more and more popularity, which it is, and more and more I'm going to call them just regular Joe travelers come to Belize, not the super niche divers, fishermen, right? But just sort of the average cruise ship customer coming back for their vacation. They tend to look for a brand when they're looking for a hotel product because they know what they're going to get. They're going to get they're going to get what they think they're going to get. Right. Uh, you know, Bob's Hotel, you know, Bob's Hotel and Beach Resort. Well, I don't know what I'm getting at Bob's Hotel and Beach Resort. Right. But but if you tell me I'm going to stay at the Marriott Oceanfront residences, I know what I'm getting. Right. Or I have a pretty good idea. If I'm staying at the Best Western, I'm going to get a value proposition. Right. And so we've invested to have two of the brand franchises, two of the four brand franchises on the island. And those types of investment properties are where I would put my money. And in fact, where our company is putting our money, some of the company money is my money. So, again, sure. very, very focused, but but very, very, I think, uh, right on spot on. We, we've got about four more minutes, but I, okay. I, but it brings me to this question about your development company there. You're talking about that specific location. Yep. What kind of inventory? First of all, how many proje projects do you have on that island currently? And so, about yeah. how much inventory do you have available for purchase? Yeah. So we have three three projects. Uh, one is an over-the-water tiny home project, sold at phase one, sold out. We're in construction right now. Uh, those are really sexy little bungalows over the water. Uh, and we'll have phase two sometime at the end of this year. And that'll be another 25 of those. So it's a limited number, but very, really sexy, cool things. Uh, we have our uh, our Marriott uh, Resort and Residences on water. Uh, it's a 202 key property. Uh, we, our development company, we're keeping 100, at least 130 of them and selling up to 72. Uh, so it's about 40% for private ownership, 60% uh, for internal ECI corporate ownership. I think we've sold about half of those. So I think we've got another maybe 35 of the private Marriott residences. Those are oceanfront residences uh, and, and very affordable, 350 to about a million bucks. So own an oceanfront residence in a Marriott resort and residence property for 350 to, you know, say 600. It's kind of the sweet spot of where those are. And then three blocks off the water, we have our Best Western. Uh, we have uh, 70 units up and uh, renting. We have another 26 under construction, and we have space to build out about another 80 uh, that we're, uh, we're we're designing the next uh, building right now. So some some great inventory price points on the Best Western. Actually, it, it, I mean Marriott's nice. Don't get me wrong. I think Mar Marriott's a great property, uh, and and it will do very very well. But the single best investment property we have is a small studio Best Western condo for about one hundred and fifty, hundred sixty thousand uh, dollars. That particular product, if I had to bullseye the best investment in Belize today, that would be it. And uh, we're we're selling some, we're keeping as many as we can keep. Again, I, I believe that when the developer retains ownership of as many. Uh, 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 at least a half or more, let's just call it that half or more, that that's a pretty strong statement about their belief in what that product yeah. is going to do in the marketplace. And You're so, exactly yeah, right. that, that's, yeah. Yep. Yeah. That, that's, that's perfect. That that's an exact statement of, truth in terms of you believe in it, you're going to own por a portion of it and you're going to stay with it. So that, yep. that goes a long way. Plus the name recognition is absolutely impeccable. Absolutely. Yep. Um, in the episode description, we need to put a link to those um, listings or to yep. those developments so that our people can see, the people that are watching can see those three different developments okay. and also your Belize handbook. handbook? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Okay, listen, thanks so much. I mean, you've given us a lot of information, again, as you did the first episode about Central America. We appreciate you. We appreciate the passion you have in teaching us about the nuts and bolts of buying and selling in Central America. Thank you so much for being here today. We appreciate it. Thank you, Hugh. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for joining in on today's episode of Realty Cast Global. Make sure to subscribe to the podcast to be notified when new episodes air. 